All right, welcome to this week. This week we're doing an activity called, it's based off of this old painting style, which is called chiaroscuro. So it's basically just lots of really light lights and really dark darks. So we're doing shading and the different shading of different shapes. We're gonna do it very basic shapes. We're gonna do a sphere and we'll do the light side and the dark shadow side. We're going to do a cylinder where it's got the light and the dark shadow. And we'll also do a cube. What I need you to have in front of you just one more time is you need to have a piece of paper, a pencil, any color of your choice. If you have a lead pencil, that works fine. If you wanna pick your favorite color, that's awesome. You will need also an eraser and a sharpener. So we're going to start by getting your piece of paper and you wanna make sure that you're drawing, you find the center of your piece of paper because that's where our cylinder is going to go. So look on your piece of paper, and identify the center, put your finger on it just for a second. We're gonna put our cylinder there. So the first thing we're going to do for a cylinder is we're going to draw a semi, I'm sorry, an oval, like a squished oval at the top. It's kind of like you get a circle and you squish it a little bit so it's not completely circular. So we're gonna start by drawing a little. And when I'm drawing the shape, instead of drawing it one time and you have to draw really hard i want you to take your hand back a little bit so we're not having our hand here when we're drawing we take it back so that our pencil is a little bit further away and you're drawing that oval shape holding your hand back i'm going to make my circle a little bit darker so you can see what shape i'm doing so i've just made mine a little darker so that's the shape we're starting with it's like a squished oval so it should be skinnier on each end than it is in the center. The center should be a little bit bigger. What you can do is when you have your pencil back, you draw it a couple of times until you get the shape that you like. There will be little lines off the edges. We can rub those out with the eraser at the end. Mine is a little bit uneven, so I'm gonna fix mine and make it a bit more even. That's the good thing about pencil is you can always come back and make it a bit more even if you don't like the way that it looks. So we're starting with the somewhat center of our page, a little bit up, you're drawing your squished oval shape. How are we going with our squished oval shape? Is everyone going well? Awesome, yes. So you've got your squished oval shape. Make sure that when you're drawing it, it's got bigger in the center than it is on either side. So you start on one side, you go in, curve it under and bring it back up to that same point. See how I hold my pencil a little bit further back so that we're not drawing really heavy, but keeping a little bit further back so it's a bit of a light drawing. The next step, we're gonna do the sides of the cylinder. So the sides of the cylinder are very straight. So I want you to go to the side, the edge, the furthest edge, and do a straight line down. One straight line down. And then the next step, very similar, you're going to go to the other side and you're going to the furthest edge and do a straight line down. See, when I do my line, I'm not doing one line. I'm doing a bunch of different little lines until I can get the straightest line that I get. So I go over it a couple of times, don't I? I'm just gonna turn it so I can draw it a little better so you can see it nice and dark on the camera. Like so. Make sure these lines here, see how mine's not the same length? That means I need to bring this one down. So these two lines need to be in line. If I was to put my pencil here, they need to make sure that they're both touching. See how one's shorter than the other? We have to make this one a little bit longer. They need to be the same length. I use my pencil to rule that out. So you can line up your pencil with where your line is to see if they're in line. Like so. So we've got the top of our cylinder. We went to the edge, edge, edge of our cylinder and went down and did the side. Then we went to the other side, right to the edge, 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 went down and did that side. 
And then we made sure by using our pencil as a ruler that these lines are the same length. We don't want one being really tall and one being really short. Good job, Ellie, that looks so good. Yes, oh my gosh, Abigail, that looks great. I like the color choice too. It's very on brand with the color I've chosen. Evie, good job, that looking so good. Did anyone else want to show me how they're going? Oh, Addie, good job, very nice and straight. Yes, Archer, very good. Archita, I like that, that's very good. Go on, Marcus, you know you want to show me your work. Yes, good job, that looks so good. All right, awesome. Okay, so we are moving on to the next step. Good job, Patias. Oh, sorry, Pots, Patsia. We are going to do the circle next. So if you have a look at this one here, my circle is covering, so sphere, which looks like a ball, is covering a little bit of my cylinder. So when we draw our circle, we've got to make sure that it covers just a little bit to the corner of our cylinder. So we're going to do our sphere about here. Again, I want you to hold your pencil a little bit back. You're going to start by just the tip of your pen. See how I'm not putting much pressure? I don't push down into it. I'm just doing a little like on the edge of a cylinder. I'm going to do a nice circle. Do a circle a bunch of times until you are happy with the shape that you've made. Until it's nice and round. See how many times I do it? I'm still going because I want to get that perfect circle shape. Should be something like that. See how those edges, I've made a bunch of different lines there. But that's okay because we're going to pick the best lines out of those and we're going to go over them. Yes. Oh, good job. Yes, good job. They're looking so good. Can I say, Potsia, your way that you're holding your pencil and drawing that circle is amazing. Good job. Yes, good job. Exactly. So when you're doing a shape and you want to make them look perfect, always use that light so that you can get the sort of setup first. Then what we're going to do is we're going to find the spot we like and we're gonna do a little darker shape around the edge of that. So you can use now, you can move your fingers down a little bit closer to really get a strong grip. And you're going to pick the shape that you like out of your little sketches. If you make a mistake, it's all good, don't worry, we can just rub it out. See how I turn my page so that I can draw towards myself because when it comes to drawing the circle if I have to draw this way oh my hands are not going to do that are they so I'll turn the page towards myself and then I'm going to draw that circle shape towards myself I find that a little easier you may find it easier to draw away or towards yourself either way you just turn your page so that it makes it easier for you All the way around, we keep turning and drawing, making that circle super round. So you'll end up with something like this. If you can see, I've kind of got a weird little point there, don't I? I'm going to fix that. So I just go back to where I didn't, I accidentally didn't touch those lines together properly, and I just fix up that edge, like so. So we should have a circle with our cylinder line through, and I know it looks a little funny at the moment, but don't worry, we're going to rub that out. Nice and round. And you should still have all these little pencil marks on the edges. Don't worry about those, because we are also going to use our trusty friend to get rid of all of those. <laughs> While you're here, grab your eraser. Let's get rid of this big line in the center first. If you're using colored pencil, it won't fully go away. But that's okay because we're going to shade it anyway. So I'll show you. Mine doesn't fully go away, but it mostly goes away. You're going to rub out that pencil. There's still a faint picture of it there, but that's all right. Then I want you to clean up these edges. So we're going to go through and we're going to rub out all of these little itty bitty marks. You might not have any itty bitty marks, but if you do, it's always good to rub those out. Going through and getting all of those little itty bitty marks. This is the point too, if you find that you don't like the shape you've made, just quickly rub it out and do another one. Getting all of those little itsy bitsy little marks.
If you've accidentally, like I did, rubbed out some of your circle, don't worry, let's go back and let's just fill that circle back in. You've got your circle and you've got your cylinder. So we rubbed out this line. I know it's not that great because I had to draw it a bit dark. Oh, that looks so good, Evie, good job. Mm. Yes, awesome. Yes, Addy, that looks awesome, that's so good. Good job, Archer. Did you wanna rub out that line in the circle for me? See this line down here? We're gonna erase this one here. All right, we're moving on to the next step. Good job, Abigail. The next step, we're going to start by drawing our cube. Now our cube, we're going to make it so that half of it sits here, but it's going to go this way. So what I want you to do is start by going, finding the line of the cylinder, and we're gonna move over a little bit, just to about there. And that's gonna be the center of our cube. So we'll go the line of the cylinder, we move over just a little bit, and we're going to do a line straight down here. Again, with my lines, I take the pencil back and I go up and down a couple of times until I get the shape that I would like. And then you go over it to make it that color. So we've got our line just next to our cylinder. I know it looks a little bit disjointed at the moment, but we'll put it all together. Awesome. So then the next step we need to do is we want to draw the bottom two angles because that will determine the rest of our shape. So we want to draw from this corner here a line that goes out to the side. Not completely straight out, but it's got a little bit of an angle, so it comes up just a little bit. Don't draw that too dark yet, because we may need to change it a little bit as we go on, because some perspective may be a bit confusing. So just lightly draw that line going up this way. Yes, good job. Awesome. Oh, you guys are so good. Now, if you can read my mind, which I feel like you probably can, we're going to do the other line going the other way. We want to try and make this line come to about here. So not in line with this cylinder, but just a little bit inside of the cylinder. Same sort of angle. See how I go back and forth and back and forth and back and forth? It's always a good technique to do so you get that line that you really like. So we have the center of the bottom and the other bottom. They do not have to be exactly the same angle, these two bottom lines, but they do. we don't want them to be straight across. We want them to have a little bit of an angle, go a little bit up, and a little bit up. Now, we're going to get to the tricky bit. When we're drawing the top of a cube, you need to make sure that this line here has the same angle as this line here. So what you can do is you can do a bit of a cheat like I do, is I put the pencil here, I push it up a little bit so it's on the same line, and then I use that as a ruler. So I'll show you an example. I put my pencil along that bottom line there. I keep it in the same direction, but I move it up and I can use that as a ruler to get my other line on the same angle. You wanna keep it on a very similar angle. So you use that as a ruler, or you could use a ruler if you have a ruler, that works fine. I like to be inventive and use what I have available to me. Or you could use your finger. Put it up to the same angle and then use that 
to rule where you're going to go. If you're amazing, you can do it by eye as well. I'm very proud of you if you can do this. I struggle with that a lot. You can draw a line, see where it is and go, oh, yeah, that needs to go that way. And you get it done. How are we all going with that one? That's the tricky part of this, isn't it? And the next step, you probably guessed it, the same thing again. We're going to get this line here and it needs to be on the exact same angle as well. So you can do your little cheat sheet like I did. You can get the pencil, put it on that line, drag it up and rule out that line. Or you could do it by eye, could use a ruler. Doesn't really matter what you use. You just want to make sure that they are as similar as possible. We want to make them parallel. So if we got these two lines and we sent them on a, a road trip going exactly in that direction, that they would never touch. Whereas if one line was going a little bit off and one line was going up, we don't ever want them to touch. We want them to stay nice and straight. <laughs> Bless you, Evie. So we've got our lines. So it's coming together, isn't it? Slowly getting there. We're seeing these shapes develop. Make sure that you make your shapes, the, the, your lines the same length. I did a bit of boo-boo there. I didn't make my lines the same length. Next step, I want you to connect this line to this line, straight down. Oopsies, I did a bit of an accident again, but that's all right. So we want to get our lines nice and straight, straight down. Nice and straight, like so. We're slowly seeing that it's turning into a cube shape, like a Rubik's cube or like a cardboard box. If anyone has cereal for breakfast, maybe it looks like a cereal box. It's a bit more cubey than a cereal box though, isn't it? Cereal boxes are tall. Then what I want you to do once you've gotten that line, we're going to join this line to this line. So it shouldn't really touch this one here. It should be just a little bit over. It should just go just next to our cylinder. Shouldn't be touching our cylinder just, should just go off of it. So I'll show you. So our line should just miss our cylinder. See how this line, I think I've done it a little bit incorrect too. That one. Oh, it's not very straight. It's always a good thing about using pencil. We can rub it out and try again, and try and make it straight. I want to try and make that line as straight as possible. You can keep adjusting your lines until you're happy with them. You can rub it out, you can try again. That's the good thing about art. There's never really a right or wrong answer. You can always try again. So we've got our cube shape. What do you think is missing last from our cube? We've got the side, we've got the other side. Well, we've got to do the top. How are we doing our cube? Do we need me to slow down or are we going okay? Thumbs up if we're doing good and I'll, if not, I'll slow down. We're doing good, we're doing good, awesome. Oh, you guys are great. Okay, so the next step is we're going to get this line and draw it as straight as we can up this way and then this line and we're going to do it this way. Again, you want this line here to be parallel with this line and we want this one to be parallel with this one. I know it's a bit tricky. So what you can do, you can do the cheat sheet again. 
you can follow the line against that line there, move it up a little bit so that it's in line with that and try and draw it out. Or you could play it by ear and try and make it look as straight as possible. Don't worry too much if it's a little bit off. We don't mind, we can always just. Oh, sorry, my cat decided that he wants to be a part of our drawing. <laughs> Silly kitty cat. He's very needy, he's very lovey, but he doesn't know when to go away. See, I've had to do a couple of lines there because I did it a little bit confusing. So uh, you can always just do a little bit like this, a little bit like that, until you are happy with the line that you have done. So we should have our cube. The next step I want you to do, we're going to get rid of this line here inside of our cube. And if you have any little scritchy scratchy lines at the back, there's little sketches, we'll get rid of those too. Let me get rid of my little sketch lines at the back. Try and make it nice and streamlined. One intentional line. I'm going to rub out that cylinder line. And redraw any lines that we have rubbed out from our cube. If you didn't manage to rub out any lines from your cube, you are great because I accidentally rubbed out those lines. Now there's something missing, isn't there? Something's just not there right now. We've got our sphere, we've got our cube, but our cylinder doesn't have a bottom, doesn't have a base. So we're going to have to put in our little base for our cylinder. Now the fun thing about this is, we don't know where our cylinder stops on here. So we could just draw a little base to pretend like it stops there. So what you're going to do is you're going to get your pencil and you're just going to draw, not a straight line, because remember the top of our cylinder is not a straight line a little bit of a curvy line, just to make it look like the bottom of our cylinder is there. I'm gonna make mine a little darker so you can see what I'm talking about. I'm gonna put the bottom of our cylinder in. So we've got our sphere. We've got our cylinder and we have our cube all ready to go. What I'm going to get you to do just to start off with is we're just going to any lines that are a little bit lighter. See how my lines here are a little bit lighter. I'm just going to go over them and make them a little darker so that they stand out a little bit more and they're a bit more intentional. So just carefully using your pencil going over those lines to make them a bit more intentional so we know that they're there. Just going over our lines. Make them a bit more intentional. My lovely trusty cat has come back again. Look at him being silly, trying to get all up in our drawing. Do you approve? Yes, you approve. Thank you, Biggie. Could you go away? All right, so you've got your circle, your sphere, your cylinder, and your cube. Now, the next step we're going to do, we need to think, where is the light coming from? On my drawing here, if you had a look, the light is coming from up here because all the shadows are down here. So we need to make the light source up here while the shadows fall back that way. Also the sphere is in front of this cube so you can see that the sphere has a shadow on the cube. So we're going to pretend that the light source is here and it's coming down this way. I'm just going to move. 
we've got our light source coming down. So what we're going to do, this part of the circle is nice and bright. This part's going to be dark. When you're shading and you're making dark areas with pencil, I want you to remember that we shade with the side of our pencil. So we shade, we hold our pencil like this, and we do these sorts of things back and forth. So this is for shading, and this is for drawing. Holding our pencil nice and straight, whereas shading is with the side, drawing is with the tip. What we are going to do, we are going to get our circle. We're going to follow the shape of our circle. So if you looked at your our hand, if you look at our hands, we can see that our hands are quite round in certain areas, aren't they? So I want you to think if we were going to draw a flat line on our hand, that would make it look really flat, but we have a rounded hand. So your circle needs to have a rounded edge. So we're going to draw our shape with the shape of the circle, not flat, but with the shape of the circle. So we start at the edge up the back and we're going to follow that around and shade the edge of our circle, following that circle shape. I'm not shading across, I'm following the circular shape. So our light source is at the front and we're just slowly coming in, following the shape of our circle. See how I'm using the edge of my pencil? Going right around the edge, following the shape of our circle. Shading takes a while, that's the only thing. So it takes a lot of slow, gradual building. See how I'm not pushing hard at all? I'm just going really soft, building it up, building it up, building it up. It takes a while because we want it to look like a soft shadow. We don't want this harsh, dark line. We want nice, soft shadow. Yes, good job. Now keep bringing that in for me, Abigail. I'm going to keep bringing it in. So we want to make it so that the light is from the top. So it's kind of like this. And we're going to keep building it up and up and up and up and up. So you should have kind of a circle shape here of just white. And we're just building as we go around. If you accidentally make your circle not so circle, it's all good. You just rub out that little shape. And keep going around. So when it's a shadow, our darkest point needs to be the edge and it needs to come lighter, 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 lightest. So you go around your edge, making it darker on the outside and lifting your weight of your pencil as it comes into the center. So we're doing little light, gradually getting lighter and lighter as you go through. So it should eventually blend out to nothing almost. We want to make it dark on the edge, but make it lighter as we come through. So darker on the edge, but make it lighter as we come through. Like so. So it slowly turns into it being light and then dark. You make sure that you've got all of your edges nice and colored in. Because we want to have those as our darkest points. So use the side of your pencil and go right around the edge of your circle and make those darkest areas in the edge. So we start in the edge, going back and forth, and then we let the pressure off our pencil as we come down. Starting at the edge, back and forth, lift off the pressure as we come back. This is a really good technique, because when you'll get to school and your teachers will ask you how to shade something, You'll be like, don't worry, miss or sir. I know exactly how to do that. 
We use these shapes in math. We use these shapes in art. We use these shapes in everyday life. Lots of back and forth and back and forth with this shading, isn't there? Awesome. So once you've got that shape down pat, what I want you to do is we're going to move on to our cylinder. Now, the top of our cylinder is pretty much the exact same as this. We are going to have this as our darkest point because the light is coming from here. What you want to do is keep that circular shape. It's kind of like a backward C. So you keep your backward C shape coming around making sure the darkest point is over here and then it comes lighter. So you've got your dark point right in the corner there. It comes up to about the C and it makes it lighter and lighter as it comes in. Need to drag it out a little bit more, that's okay, because it does have a lip like the top of a can. So sometimes this little edge bit is a little bit darker than the other area making the cornermost area the darkest area so that it slowly looks like it's getting from darker to lighter. Oh, that looks so good. Good job, Abigail. Oh, that sphere is looking very fierce. Very good. Nice and rounded. Oh yes, Evie, good job. That looks so good. So we've got the darkest point as this one here and we're bringing it around. Next step, we're doing this side of our cylinder. So again, we're not coloring straight across. We wanna keep that shape, but unlike the sphere, we wanna make it a bit of a half C. So it's not a straight line, but a little bit of a curve to it. So we bring it into about the center and we're just making it a little bit of a curve. So not exactly straight, but not too flat. So you're doing a little curve, curve, curve. So it's not exactly straight, it's a little bit of a curve. with your cylinder, we don't want to shade it so it's a straight line. We want to make it a little bit, some a little longer than others, some a little shorter. So we want to make this edge a little bit, not messy per se, but uneven. See how I have it and it's, it's uneven. But I've done something wrong. My darkest point is here. I need to make my darkest point there, don't I? So I'm going to go with my pencil and really get that point make it a bit darker. Still coming in with those lines. Making it nice and dark. Good thing about the edge of the cube being here is we can just go and cover that little section there because that'd be nice and dark anyway. We're going to follow the exact same technique going down, coming across from here, coloring it just a little bit across. We'll go, we can go straight across right next to this. So see how it's doing quite little? Just to get that edge in, we can go in a straight line. Just so we get that edge and we don't have to worry about accidentally coloring on the inside of the cube. We wanna be nice and careful not to get inside that cube. Just coming just straight next to that. just to set it up so that we can add that other bit. We're just coloring just next to that. Make sure we're coloring across, not down, because we want it to look like it's the outside of the cylinder. We want to mimic the shape. It's 2D, but we want to make it look 3D. Then once you've got that section, you're going to start moving that in again with that half 
curvy line. Half curvy line. Yes. Oh, look at you go smashing it, Abigail. Get that half curvy line. I'm going to show you on mine. See how you can see that it's got a clear line here? We want to blend this area. So you want to make sure that your pencil, you're blending that color in. Oh, Evie, that looks so good. So we're blending that little area out so that we can't see that harsh line anymore. And make some a little longer, make some a little shorter. So we're blending out that line. Same with the bottom of our cylinder, same thing, blending out that line. We're going to move on to the next step. We need to make the shadow for our sphere. So our sphere, the shadow is casting this way. So it's hitting here, isn't it? So we need to do like a semicircle on this part here. Now to do the shadow on this, do a really light little semicircle. You don't want to see it too much. If you can see mine, see how light I did that? Super, super light. We're going to start shadow from the center of the cube. So you want to start at the center. You want to go up a little bit. Then you want to lightly fan it out and go smaller towards the bottom. Then. Kind of like a triangle. So we go up, back and forth, down into a triangle, fitting within that semicircle that we made. Up the top, taking it down into that semicircle we made. Same for the bottom. Underneath, bring it up into a triangle, semicircle we made. So then it gives you that illusion that it is the shadow from that. And again, from the bottom, bringing it up into the semicircle and the edge, bring it across into the semicircle. Like so. It's okay if it's got a little bit of the rough edges at the moment, we can come back with an eraser and really smooth that out. The next shadow, so we've got a shadow here, but we don't have a shadow on the floor. So we need to do a shadow. When you see a shadow of yourself, like if you can see my shadow of my hand, sometimes the shadows, they change a little bit. They get a bit squished. Sorry. So we need to make a squished shadow. So it starts a little bit below where it's sitting. It's going to go this way. And it's going to just be a bit of a squished shadow going towards our semicircle. So it should meet up with the edge of the shadow that you've made on that box there. And then we're gonna make a shadow one whole color. So the good thing about shadows are they're an even color. So you wanna make that just one flat, simple, Shade. You don't need to follow the shape of the shadow, which is good because shadows are flat. One flat shade there. Like so. Nice flat shade. 
Now we need to think, our shadow is kind of hitting here too, isn't it? So we need to make this a little bit darker because our circle is hitting that shape there too. So that's where our circle is hitting as well. So you need to darken the bottom of your cylinder a little bit so that it looks like the shadow of the sphere is sitting there as well. See how it looks like that sphere is in front of that cylinder and it's casting a shadow onto those things? Awesome. What I want you to do, see the edge of my shadow? It's a bit blurry. Let's try and make that a little bit more straight. Just try and color that one nice line. Try and make it nice and cut. Maybe up here to one nice line. How are we all going with that one? Oh, yes, good job. That looks so good. Good job, Abigail. Good job, Evie. Look at that shadow. That's so good. All right, next step. We are going to move on to our cube. Our cube has the same shadow sort of situation. It's going to be a bit squished. So we want to start our shadow coming up here. Not at the corner, just a tiny little bit off the center. And we're going off the corner, sorry. We're going to do a line that goes back that way, like so. We're going to do our little shadow coming off this way, like that. Then we're going to do just about a quarter of the way up, straight across. And that is going to be our shadow. And like we said before, shadows are a flat color. So we just need to fully color that little area in. Nice and flat, one flat color. By one flat color, what I mean is we're not seeing light here, dark here, and a little bit middle over there. It's all dark. All one same level of color. All dark. See yeah, what's on the edge of the paper? If you have something resting underneath it, a good thing to do is to draw right off the edge of the paper. Makes it a little bit easier. Sometimes we find coming back and forth, we we'll miss that edge bit. We want to get that whole area nice and flat. And if you're like me and you draw extremely heavy, you might need to sharpen your pencil. Or if you're silly like me and you break your pencil, you may need to sharpen it. <laughs> Luckily, sharpeners are amazing and they help us to sharpen things very quickly. So we're following that nice and flat color all the way along. Nice and flat. And get that itchy nice. All the same color. That flat shadow just coming behind our cube. We're getting there. We're learning our chiaroscuro with our fancy words, which just means dark darks, light lights, high contrast. So dark dark, light light, big difference between light and dark. With our cube, when we're shading our cube, our light will be hitting here. So we're going to make the dark points here and up here. What I want you to do, starting with the bottom, this bit here is going to be really dark and this bit here. So we're going to go in the center, go across. You're going to slowly come up and it makes a triangle. So we go across, come up to a triangle like so.
across to a triangle. Then you're going to go the other way, up and down to a triangle. I'm just going to turn my paper so it's a bit easier for me. Up and down to a triangle. So it kind of makes this smooth shape. Across and up to our triangle, down and across to our triangle. Then we want to also darken this area up the top here. Not nearly as much though. So we're just going to go across a little bit and bring it down. Like so. Then because this is the darkest, darkest side of our cube, because the sun does not hit there, we're going to color all that in. So you're going to just make it just a light shadow all colored in. Not nearly as dark as our big shadow at the back. Just a light shadow. All colored in. This might mean that we might need to make some of our dark areas a little darker. So maybe we might need to make this a little bit darker, make it really stand out. And we definitely need to make this top bit a little darker and make it stand out. So we're making all those areas darker. The edges of your box, the edges of your cube, so like the bottom edge, This middle edge here and this top edge need to be the darkest points. See how dark they are? So we need to make really define that line, really define that line, really define that one. And then blend it out a little bit so that's not so harsh. Keeping that triangle form where you're colouring up, colouring down, and colouring across. Like so. Oh, good job. Yes. Awesome. And then we are going to get in this corner here. So this is getting hit a little bit by light. So it's not going to be super dark but it is getting a little bit of shade from this sphere. So what we wanna do is lightly start by going all the way across, very lightly, not touching the sphere, the circle shade, coming lightly across down to a tip. See how light that is? So we've got really dark, dark, and then we've got really light, light. Go across the top, making our way across, Coming down like so. Then the other side as well. What I want you to do, this side here, making it light, coming across all the way up. We don't need to do it too dark because the good thing is that this is the light side. So it kind of gives us that effect that it's, oh, there's a shadow there, but oh, there's a little bit of light. It's a little bit too bright for me. I'm going to make that a bit darker. Ah, good job. Yes. Oh my gosh, look at that. That's so good. All right, we had a question. Did I do the right one? Did I press the right button? What was your question, lovely? Move on to our last final up the top. I oh, know we're near the end. This is the darkest spot and then this will be the darkest spot. So again, we remember our technique. We're going to go super triangle shape up to a point and then triangle shape down 
up to that point. So it's kind of making that triangle shape, coloring it down all the way across and coloring this one down. Well, not coloring, sorry, I'm wrong, shading that down across to that point. We should end up with this triangle kind of shape. Make sure that our darker spot is along here and along here. So we want to go and really get that dark point in and really get that dark point in. Like so. Yay! Then we're going to do the top of this one too. Making that all the way across, bring it down and across, bring it down. Then we just don't want this to be super white, do we? Too bright. So we're going to color that just a nice black color so that it looks like a little bit of light, but not too much. <laughs> Yes, that's looking so good. We're almost at the end. We're almost there. Just got to tidy up and get some of those finishing bits off. So your top of your, your cube, you need to make these edges a bit darker. You need to make these edges a bit darker. Now I need to make this edge a little bit. Coloring it down. Make sure the darkest point is the edge. Color it down. Same with this one, making the darkest point our edge. Like so. So our darkest points, like so. And the only final thing that we need to do to finish this off is I want you with your pencil, make sure we're drawing. We're going to redraw out these lines so that you can really see the edges of your shapes. So we're going to start with the bottom of your cube. Really draw that line again so you can see where that definition of that bottom of that cube to that shadow is. Redraw the side line where it is to where the shadow is so we can see the difference. So that really just makes it pop out. You're going to redraw all of your lines for me. Just the lines of your shapes. And this is your finishing touch to make those shapes really concrete and look like they're there. See how that edge really just gives it that extra. Wow. Yes, that looks so good. Evie, good job. Getting those corners, getting those edges, really make it stand out. Just going to get all of these edges. Make sure you get them nice and dark so you can see them. You want them to really stand out compared to these shadows because your shadows are quite dark. We really want our edges to stand out. Same with our cylinder, make your cylinder stand out. Get the top. Get the sides. Make that pop. And this bottom line here, see I've lost my bottom line? Really make your bottom of your cylinder stand out as well. And your sphere, we wanna make that stand out so we can see that. We don't wanna get it lost in our shadow. And what is the final, final step to do when you have an artwork that you have created? How do I know you made it? <laughs> you have to sign it. Exactly, very good. Get in the bottom and give yourself a little signature. Maybe you want a smiley face. Maybe you want to do this fancy arch name. We're going to give it a big, fun signature to really own that artwork.
<laughs> Can I get everyone to show me their drawings? I want to see how amazing they are. Marissa, that's looking so good. Good shading. Yes, Evie, good job. Can you sign them? Come on, guys, look at it. Oh, that looks so cool, Ellie. I like that a lot. It's very good. I like the additional love hearts too. It's a nice touch. Good job, Abigail. That looks so good. Yes, Marcus, that looks awesome. Ah, oh, Cheetah, that looks so good. I love your shadows too. Polizia, I love the colors. They're looking so good. Very good, Addy. That's such a good shadow. Elena, amazing. William, your shading is insanely good. That is so good. That looks awesome. That sphere looks, oh, perfection. All right, lovelies. Well, I hope you had a great time. I want you to take these skills and take them back to your teachers and be like, don't worry, I can shade. Let's do it together. <laughs> Goodbye. Enjoy your afternoon. Hope everyone has a wonderful night. Don't get rained on tomorrow. Oh, that looks so good. Bye-bye, lovelies. Enjoy. Well, let's see if I can turn you all off mute and say goodbye. I can. Bye-bye. Enjoy. Bye. 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 B